And we're back. Apparently, I'm having some volume issues, which is to be expected, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you for checking out the stream. Um, let me talk about the project and tell you why why I start streaming, why should I even be streaming, and then we'll jump into the art. Um, this is the first project I've ever drawn myself, so I always hire artists to draw it, and I write it. I write a script, basically, like a movie script is kind of what it looks like. And uh, I decided that it was it was time to try and write a story that I could draw. So this is you'll see the art's much more simplistic. Um, but yeah, I'll just open it up and. Uh, you can see here I've done some watercolor these are some design ideas I had let me get a little closer in there so I'm planning to do all traditional watercolor background here and then um, because of the way the story works and what it's about I'm really trying to make sure that characters are the only two things on the screen or on the page that are digitally drawn. So every they'll stand out really, really well from this traditional watercolor background. Now this was kind of a, I took this from a Last of Us drawing and just threw my characters in there. I was just trying to get an idea of watercolor. But I went through, you can see I went through several renditions of what man should look like and I settled on this one you might find this funny because the beard covers up most of his torso <laughs> so since I'm not a super great artist this this hides some of my inability to draw um, now the music is too loud interesting okay so let's get down a bit Alright, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that's much better for you. Let me know if it is. Um, but yeah, so I, I drew man. This was the basic idea. I'm actually going to do brown hair. Um, but yeah, very simple. And then bot, I went through a couple designs. I wanted something that looked like it kind of opened up and could spew out different supplies. Um, and this just looked too basic. So I went with this... Uh, angular shape um, but yeah to get into it so I've already drawn 30 pages and this is roughs um, basically what that means is you'll see so it's very basic outlining sketching based on my comic and it even says right here a note delete so I didn't like this page um, I was originally trying to show him in a like real-world situation um, and just different people and then contrast that with the next page being this exact same setting but all the people are gone because this is a story about him looking for people but the problem was I didn't think that transition was necessary I just wanted to throw the reader right into it so here's kind of where I landed um, with this uh, man and bot in every single chapter opens into a new state um so you get the welcome to new york or welcome to wherever and you're traveling from east to west um with man and bot as they look for a person another person um yeah this story with like joel cash he's a buddy of mine he helped me um come up with some of the ideas so i wanted to make sure and credit him but we created it together and then i wrote the whole script myself and now i'm illustrating it myself for the first time so yeah there's some really um interesting decisions that i've made and some that i'm gonna have to come back and do as you can tell this is page three so we're we're starting we went from page one to page three so obviously I've decided to insert a different page later 
Now this is all something that you want to do in a process if you can. I'm sure it would drive an artist crazy if I was a writer and I kept sending them changes. But as the artist, I kind of have the ability to mess around with the story and get the flow I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is this is a goofy story. It's kind of funny. It's got some serious parts. There's there's definitely some themes that are that are more serious. But overall, it's a uh, yeah, it's that type of that type of silly, funny theme. So let's get to our page for today. Because that's what you came to see here, see me do, right? You came to see me do, uh, to do some drawing. Um, Maggie, I haven't seen any chat updates if the music is too loud or not, so I'm just gonna go for it. Um, let's see. So, one thing I'm thinking about here as I set up the page, I have a script that I'm looking at. Um, so I have to I have to kind of think about where everything's laid out and what your head your mind's gonna do. Oh, good, good, thank you. Um, getting feedback about my volume, um, but the yeah. It, so I'm trying to figure out here. I'll set the scene up for you. So man has made his way to Denver already to Colorado, and he's in a city. And he's filled some of the city bus with mannequins. Um, this was highly inspired by the movie uh, Swiss Army Man, which is a crazy movie in itself about a guy who is very alone and is hanging out with a dead guy who talks, <laughs> which is just weird. Um, but the whole thing I liked about that scene was how he was looking for a community. He felt alone and he was trying to fill a bus with people. And I'm trying to do that here, but I'm contrasting that very differently because I want the man to not be satisfied with that. Whereas in the movie, they draw on, on and on and he goes back to the bus and has a relationship with a mannequin. It's a whole thing. I want him to not be satisfied with that. So I'm gonna show that and then he's gonna move on. Um, but yeah, those are some, some intentional decisions that I make based on inspirations from other things. So we got him on the city bus. Um, one thing I do, and I know other artists do it. Let me move this real quick. Pulling out my phone because references matter. Um, I use them all the time. So I had already prepared a reference. And what I'm trying to do is figure out exactly how, how big of a first panel I want. Because what I'm, what I'm doing first is I'm establishing that there's a bus with some people, just shadows of people, because I want the reader to not know yet by looking at the first panel that they're mannequins. Um, so that's, that's really the goal. And remember what I said earlier, this is all about um, roughs. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want the scene to look. It's not about having it be perfect right now. In fact, it will not be. That'll come later. And I have to be okay with that as I'm drawing. I have to understand that um, perfection is not something that to me is gonna drive this story. I'm, I'm a story first. So my job actually, what I do for a living is understanding story, teaching story, training people on how to tell their story and telling stories in general, almost like journalism. So that's what's driving me to even draw this in the first place is I love the story so much. I love what happens. And uh, I want to share it with you guys because one, I'm extroverted, and two, if you know the Enneagram at all, I'm a seven, which means I like to share stuff with people that I love. Um, so whether that be music or movies or whatever, I'm going to want to share stuff with people. So thank you for joining me.
Any, uh, any questions for me? Not, that's fine. I'll just keep on drawing. Now, one thing that's difficult as I'm thinking about what I'm doing is uh, like trying to decide, man, do I want, how much detail do I want to put in? Because I'm planning to watercolor in I'm, I'm, that style of watercolor. I'm really going to be basic in what I'm doing. And so I want to really be careful to not spend a ton of time doing way too much detail plus it doesn't fit within my style if I do actually I don't like that circle at all this is where it, tools come in handy because from the angle and everything I can just find the, the right one yeah it looks good enough let's do that one Now again, I said precision, and now here I am using a precision tool, but whatever. It works close enough for now. And then this is all coming black. See that that normally would bother me and obviously isn't right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna watercolor that, so why does it matter? Why get too concerned with anything like that when it's gonna change? Now I probably will leave some of the pencil, because I think it gives a cool roughness to everything. Um But yeah, I don't I want a certain certain feel because this story really is a lot about um, technology and how searching for people through technology not very effective in fact um, he finds out towards the end of the story that bot who has been protecting him with these little alerts with the light on his head here I'll show you the light on his head um, he's been alerting him any to any danger his, his dad built the bot for him he knew something was happening that was not good and he just wanted to protect his son and so he built this bot and something about that angle I think I know what I did I didn't force the perspective enough I think. Let's see. Let's see what happens when I do that. That's better. Anyway, see lots of erasing because I'm not the best. And artists make mistakes, so this is the time to make them if you're gonna make them. But anyways, so his dad built the robot for him, and uh, sure enough. The robot was meant to protect him, but instead, you can see I'm getting much more basic because I want to be done with this tire. Instead, the robot's been warning him of people and he didn't know the whole time. So that's kind of the, whoa, this is crazy because you think the robot's there to help him and it is, that's what his dad intended but his dad also didn't intend the robot to think that people were the danger but they are in some ways in our lives and the robot since that instead and warned him about that instead and so this is a story about how technology does not lead to good community most of the time and it's kind of an analogy of that in the end times ish type story that's that's the basic idea behind it there's a lot more to it but they're very if I can say the idea in a few, just a few words and be simple about it then 
that's good. You need to be able to say your story in few words and really be able to summarize it and understand it. Uh, the term is used all the time, elevator pitch. If you can pitch it in the time you have an elevator ride, then you know your story pretty well. And that's really important to know your story that well. Now I'm trying to follow the same lines I did here, but slightly less exaggerated as I go. So right now, trying to get my windows in there. We'll start here and work our way back. And it doesn't have to be exact to the picture. It's a reference. I'm just trying to get a basic idea of what I'm looking for. Well, hopefully whenever you're watching this, you're having a good day or a night because I plan to take these, put them out there uh, for people to be able to see on my YouTube channel. Um, you can find that in the link. There's also uh, other social media and stuff. You can find uh, links to my books, my website, all that in the socials. And I appreciate all of you who follow with me and um, are part of this storytelling journey that I'm on. I have a lot of fun doing it. A lot of fun. You might think, man, he's taking a lot of time on the bus. And you're probably right. I'm probably putting way too much detail into it. But I'm about done with it. I'll do something in the sky later. Sometimes I'll do that or I'll write like pretty sky and then I know what I'm the kind of thing I want to do with it um, but here here's the other photo I chose which is like a dirty city bus um, for reference and that has to do with me uh, wanting it to feel like time has passed and he's like things are starting to decay and be gross. I'm not making a comment about the city transportation of Denver. Seemed pretty nice when I was there. Denver was pretty cool actually. My buddy used to live around there and I went and visited him with Maggie it was super fun. It's a really cool guy. Trying to find the angle I want just as a light reference from the front to the back of the bus. And then once I kind of got it, draw across. And then from there you can add in the seats and stuff over the reference lines, but kind of need that first. I'm not good at just eyeballing it and getting the angles that I want. Not at all. I don't know many people that are. It takes a lot of practice. But I am, you'll notice I am doing some detail here because the more, the more detail I do in some ways, the better because later on when I come back to watercolor, I don't have to think about all these details that I didn't do earlier in the process. So I do add some, I just don't want to spend 
you know, I could spend 10 hours on a drawing if I wanted. Is it going to make it better for the purposes of storytelling? No. Um, and having, having those types of, I guess, limits is important. You need to be able to know your capacity and what you can and can't do. See, I almost made the mistake of angling, but straight up lines always go straight up no matter the depth. Um, at least I think. <laughs> I guess I don't know for sure, but I think that's how it works. See, so much of this is just me trying to remember what I did in high school um, in art classes and stuff, because I didn't take any college art classes. Nothing like that, and so for me, being a visual person, that helps a lot, but I still can get just a little bit lost if I don't think to my, my uh, fundamentals, I guess you could say. I always think of Reggie Miller, when I say fundamentals, he used to have a commercial in the 90s that said reading is fundamental. <laughs> My brothers and I would laugh about it. Not that it's... Not that it's funny, but the way it was said and everything was corny. See, that's not right. It's not the right angle. I wonder if I clear chat. I need a clear chat. There we go. Now I can see it easier. Now if you happen to miss the stream and catch it later, feel free to type in the comments or whatever questions you may have or anything really and I'll try and answer it if I, if I can. You'll notice the music playing is by the same person. They have a copyright free playlist. It's pretty decent of lo-fi music, which I actually really enjoy. Um, I used to get on the YouTube channel. There's a YouTube study channel or something that was lo-fi. Now there's a bunch of them, but there used to just be one when I was in college. It would be playing 24 seven and I'd use it to study. That seems way too wide. I'm gonna shorten it up. I'm gonna go to all this work and then I'm gonna very quickly put in mannequins because I don't I don't wanna spend a bunch of time on human form right now. It just can get overwhelming if you aren't good at it, and I would say I'm mediocre at best. Human form can be pretty tough. People practice that a lot. It might be kind of fun to have this coming off. I'm not sure yet. Does that look weird? Uh, looks kind of weird. It draws your eye to the right. That's something you don't want to do. You don't want to draw an eye this way to the right when you're wanting them to go down here to the left for the next thing. And that's important to think about. Like, okay, where where am I drawing them? Is this flowing? Like this bus, it's going to the right. And this aisle is going to the left. That's, that's intentional. I did that on purpose. Um, it's something you want to do just to... Like I said, keep the flow of your eye in the right the flow in the right place, keep everything in the right place. Man, I'm not liking some of these seats. I think it's supposed to be shorter as it goes back. Yeah, okay. But my goal every time I stream will be to finish one page. We'll see how that goes. 
because I just don't know about that. But that's the goal. That'd be cool to do. You see, I'm getting this weird seat angle thing. It's because I angled the first seat and it wasn't supposed to be. So now all the seats are angling back weird. When if, if I just would have went straight and then I go straight back again, it kind of just disappears. I think I can get away with that because it's getting smaller and smaller as we go back. And then I'll put this big divider thing here. See this angle up here is a little bit easier to get because I'm just doing the opposite angle of that one. of detail once I watercolor this it's gonna be so inexact and um, just a basic idea of what a bush is that I'm not really gonna have a whole lot of referency type stuff I guess I don't I don't know the right word small curve so that this feels like a curved piece. If I do the same thing here, you also want to get closer and closer as you go further back. <clears throat> Just little perspective things to add to what you're doing.
So, if you're curious about my other books, um, I haven't drawn them, but I do have some other comics out there from artists who are much better than me in different ways. Uh, but you can find their work in my books. Um, one is called The Deadly Kids um, by a talented Jesse as the artist. And uh, yeah, it's a crazy story about these two teenagers, uh, brother and sister, who travel to another dimension of Earth after they're they basically die. They're brought back on the operating table by this crazy mad scientist guy. Um, and their bodies are robotic from the neck down. And they... They go on a... A crazy dimensional journey to another version of Earth. But all they really want is to eat. They're hungry from the procedure and travel. And uh, they're supposed to be saving the city from this giant monster. But instead, they're trying to figure out how they can get a burger. And it's very silly and very much in the vein and inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy. Like this kind of not the hero you'd expect. You know, some fun stuff. So that was very different from some of my stories because usually I'm not quite that uh, silly. I usually take a more serious approach and this story is really silly too actually so I guess I'm leaning more away from that um, for now. But Burdens of Draco is another one of the comics. There's two chapters of that out and the third one's being worked on by the talented Carissa. Um, and that is an epic Base story. So I'm right now. I'm gonna get rid of my references. I no longer need those. And now I'm gonna check out my own stream on my stream <laughs> to make sure I'm not missing any chats or anything. All right. Let's see what the script says now. Oh wait. I gotta put mannequins here. And by mannequins, I mean. Not actually mannequins, but just like different posed people. Just getting the idea. All oh, right. <laughs> My goodness. We're supposed to have the illusion. There are people in there. By the shading. Probably put another one close to the window. Maybe this one's just kind of sitting still on his own. Maybe I'll put a bus driver up here. Funny old school bus driver hat. So it doesn't need to be exact. It's just a rough idea. Um, remembering what the inside of a bus looks like. <laughs> As I go, it's been a while since I've been in a bus. Probably college when I was on the track team. It was the last time I was on the bus. exactly where the shape is because you gotta have the, these shapes here just so I know 
kind of the poses I'll do different poses later but what I don't want to happen with this these are mannequins so I don't want a dynamic pose where they're really showing some type of action I want them stationary uh, so it feels less eventful okay so now man in here um, I've been drawing him a lot so he's a lot easier than he was at first it's just a couple of black eyes some crazy hair big long beard and then he's talking and I put a little nose in there Always give him a pearl mustache. draw a good hand by the way <laughs> it's not important right now to make bot look up so he doesn't actually look up we don't have that kind of mobility doing the bus door I want him stepping stepping down off the bus we don't really need to draw the rest of the bus I don't think because sometimes if you establish something you don't have to necessarily um, it as much 
because the reader knows what it is. Already, you'd know what that is because you've been looking at all these. So, um, uh, this is where anatomy is tough. Okay. skinny all that because now I put a beard there but the rough head design and he's not heavy because he was trying to connect with plastic people At this point is insane. Keeps getting longer throughout the story and he never films it or anything so it gets real ratty and crazy. He always wears a well most of the time he wears a ball cap. It says kicks on it instead of nicks. That's where I started in New York. Eyes are way too big. Wonder what's wrong with this face. Should be smaller because he's kind of disappointed. Much better. Beady little eyes.
just get an outline of his body more clear. And now, bot says something. He says, oh, he doesn't say anything. Yeah, be careful with your word placement. People read things a certain way based on how you lay them out. So you don't want it to read wrong. Sometimes I use stick figures to kind of try and get exactly what I'm looking for before I get too crazy. Now he's it's just too static. He needs to be So what I'm trying to do here is have his arms kind of hanging down and his head hanging down like extreme, which means his beard hangs down. his head's turned sideways. I think it's the angle. So I need to be more... Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey. You guys are showing up and it's almost over. Thank you for coming though. Been drawn for a while and 
trying to figure out what to do. This is supposed to be the street of Denver. Um, but it's been a while since I've been there, so I don't remember exactly what buildings are there or anything. So I'm gonna just kinda rough it and get some, some basic ideas of stuff, cause this is all gonna be watercolored later. I've been doing trying to track the pages so if I go to last page page 30 and that's beef jerky just for reference it's not a cigar or anything that's why when he's slowly eating it down he's going nom 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 mmm <laughs> right here I'm trying to do alright so it's page 31 yeah See how that works. Yeah, transitions okay. Sometimes you don't have to have a, a very solid transition, especially with a book like this. Oh, you're laughing at the beef jerky thing. Oh man. <laughs> well, he actually. So he was super hungry. They were looking at the sunset together. Like, I'm hungry, I haven't seen a store in miles. And the robot's like, what would you like? I can produce anything. And he's like, jerky. <laughs> and so he just spits it out and he's like, oh my goodness, how have I not known this? So he falls asleep with a full belly. Um, and then the next page, this is when he, the bot's standing over him. And he's, this is him on the grass. There's gonna be the bot shadow here. And he'll be like, jerky wrappers everywhere. And he's just, this is him asleep on the ground, just waking up and all, the first thing he does when he wakes up after the bot says time to get moving is he eats the jerky stick. <laughs> but he's getting sadder and sadder as the story goes because he hasn't found anybody. Um. So I was telling Matt about this when I was testing the stream. You'll think this is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, every single chapter, this is a two-pager, but most most chapters are gonna have uh, a new state and the state sign I've made different. So if you look there, it says uh, Colorado, make it less boring, making I-70 less boring, which I think is pretty funny. Um, and yeah, there's another one I thought was really, oh yeah, here, um, welcome to Indiana, crossroads of nowhere. So I, I tried to like throw some funny stuff in here and you'll notice, um, we go from, uh, I-70 East in Indiana to Colorado and he just says, um, basically they're just bored <laughs> for, for those states in between there. Um, yeah, there's several pages I need to add, several other things I need to do to get this. I was, I was telling them earlier in the stream, one thing I'm doing and I should, I should reiterate, this is all traditional art. It's going to be watercolor. Um, here's an example of the type of color I'm gonna do very muted very different um, and I'll probably like add in like trees and stuff and, and things like that but like add little details with fine things like this but watercolor and then what I'm gonna do is take both the bot character and the man character and they will be the only thing digital on the page. So I'm gonna scan these pages in watercolor and then have digital characters on top of that. But that is it for the stream for today or tonight. Um, thank you for joining. Hopefully uh, you guys come hang out again next time. Thank you for your comments, your chats, all that good stuff. Um, 
Yeah. Check out my socials in the link. Love you guys.